to the Learning Reinvented podcast, brought to you by myself, Katie Godden. And James Politilo from The Learning Effect. There are lots of learning podcasts out there, so we wanted to do something slightly different. This week, we're going to be talking about big events which are marketed to help you find the right solutions for your business and whether or not that really actually happens in reality. So, James, we recently attended Learning Tech in London. This is the first event that we've been to since lockdown 2020. What were your thoughts on it? I think I was probably a little bit surprised and probably disappointed would be my initial takeaways because, you know, we were we attended Learning Tech in February 2020. It was prior to the pandemic. You know, there was some element of coronavirus being on the agenda, but nothing had yet reached the UK and it ran as it did and we've been through a huge amount of change since then you know in the way we live in attitudes there's been so much world change and there had sort of been a change and a fourth change to learning online so if you're thinking learning tech that you know this had been a great catalyst for forcing people to make changes they'd never made before so you'd think rocking up two and a bit years later to a learning tech exhibition that that would have grasped some of that nettle and actually come to the forefront and own the space and, and being quite creative and innovative. And there was no innovation, no creativity, and it was almost like we were back in February 2020. There was nothing different. It was still the same set of people or a very similar set of people talking about things upstairs in the conference. I looked at the titles and the titles hadn't even changed very much from the talks. And then downstairs, there were circa 200 providers offering out solutions, which again, over those two year periods had not shown a great deal of evolution. So yeah, all in all, I don't think it was the event it should have been. No, I completely agree. I think uh, they could have reflected on the changes that we'd made in our kind of general lives and working lives over the past couple of years and that they really kind of missed the mark on that. It didn't feel particularly inclusive. I didn't feel like if you weren't able to attend the event, for example, or um, if you had to go to a meeting on that day or whatever, um, you kind of missed out on those talks and things like that. And there wasn't anything to uh, enable you to be able to catch up on those at all or or bring you to the event if you weren't able to physically be there so that was quite disappointing do you think you can really find the right solution for your business just by attending those sorts of events i think the way they haven't changed probably not and they're not going to change in the future either because when we were at learning tech this year they were already booking in all the suppliers for next year so it's in the same format the same floor space the same way it will work so there is a load of innovation they could put over the top but they don't seem to want to or even maybe not be creative enough to think of different ways of doing it but i think if you rock up there as someone attending that event you come through an initial opening into this you know cavernous space with lots and lots of suppliers and there are all sorts of different suppliers there but it's very hard to differentiate between them there's obviously the ones that have paid a lot of money to be there and have very large floor spaces you probably can't miss them because you'll trip over them as you walk in or they're very much towards the center of the space and a lot of those stands are big they're flash you know there's games there's engagement stuff going on but that doesn't necessarily help you find the things that are going to add substance to what you're doing in learning and you've then got a smaller set of suppliers which again might be slightly glitzy might not be might be very straightforward but you've got 200 of them to navigate and the support materials in advance aren't particularly great the online information isn't particularly great so you know we've gone to the effort of looking at all those 200 suppliers categorizing them being able to direct people to particular spaces but I think without that level of guidance and support you walk in there and you'll probably just follow the crowd follow the glitz or follow the names you know before and across the space of the event you lose energy you know you see people traipsing around and you see them that energy level dropping off um I one of the bizarre things was 
lots of the suppliers this year, as in previous years, were struggling to get their demos working because of the poor Wi-Fi connectivity in the arena, which I think that's a bit of an own goal for a, a tech event, that they don't ensure that there is better connectivity for that event. You might say, well, that's because it's in the Excel. or well, you're a pretty big customer and you can work out a way around it. So, you know, I think if you're going in there and wanting to find a very calm, structured way of finding learning tech, which in all honesty is the best way of approaching it, I think all you're going to do is get bombarded with lots of things and probably walk out with something that was at a glitzy stand, at a stand that was well attended or maybe a name you knew before. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think even for us who are familiar with learning tech, it was really difficult to have good conversations with kind of perhaps new suppliers that we hadn't met before or even existing suppliers that, that we were um, friendly with um, because we were like quite distracted a lot of the times because it's so loud in there and having those really good conversations is quite difficult. Um, but we've helped a number of clients over the past few years um, with uh, selecting learning tech. Um, what do you think that we've noticed that's helped this process rather than kind of going to those big events? Well, I think what we've done is apply into our process that we help clients with our, you know, years of experience of doing this, of being in that on that buyer journey, our knowledge of the market, our knowledge of the different suppliers and our knowledge of learning holistically. So we're not just looking at things from a learning tech space. We're not even just looking at things from a learning space. We're looking at business performance, uh, employee attraction, employee engagement, all of those sorts of things that holistically you should be looking at when you're looking for a learning tech um, purchase because a learning tech purchase sits as part of something else. It's not an end to itself. So I think what we normally notice when a client comes to us is they've got some sort of presenting need. So they are coming because their contract is due to run out or you know they've just gone through a merger or some sort of acquisition or they're going through growth or they've outgrown a solution they may have put in before or a solution that sits on the set on the side of HR tech. And Again, people come to us with all sorts of, of different presenting needs, but I think the most important thing and the best thing that we do with our clients is to almost just draw a line and go, let's go back. Let's understand your business. Let's understand what you're trying to achieve. Let's understand where this fits into everything else, because far too often when we've spoken to clients and we ask a couple of questions, they don't have the answers. And that's not criticism. That's just a reality. They haven't done that level of thinking. And as soon as we start asking those questions of clients, that starts them thinking that actually maybe they're presenting need and maybe what they're looking to achieve is not the right thing. And then therefore what they're presenting to whichever supplier they've talked to is again, maybe not the full picture. And that's pretty dangerous because if you think when you're someone going to a supplier to look to engage with them, they're in, that's a buying process straight away. So they're going, they're trying to listen to something you say that is a buying signal that is going to link into a product, a feature or something that they have in place. And there's all level of degrees of partnership and some of the suppliers are better at partnering than others. And they will, you know, sometimes ask lots of questions and, and, and identify that maybe your presenting need and maybe your request is not as clear or as developed as it could be. And, and some suppliers are really good at that. Others really aren't. They'll just whip you through a process and get you a system at the end of it as quickly as they can. But I think the challenge is if you're going through that process and doing that with one supplier, you're getting again a very siloed view of what your options may be. So what we do is try and get the customer to understand what it is that they're trying to achieve, where that sits in. So, you know, really understand the constraints they've got, the opportunities they've got. And then we take them through that process of walking through that journey of, of identifying what we call our differentiating factors, because there's lots of things you'll see in learning tech that are really bells and whistles, or you can achieve in lots of different ways in 90% of systems. And 
they might look very good, but really that's not what's important. It'll be something else that's underpinning that system or the way it operates or the way it allows you to engage with your people, maybe a remote workforce or various different factors that really differentiate amongst the you know, 200 suppliers you'd see in learning tech and the many thousands more that aren't in that room. So we help people to identify those differentiating factors. And then from there, we go out to the market and, and find them a shortlist from there. So they're not having to go through the pain of speaking to hundreds of people, which may or may not be relevant to them. Yeah, I think that is really one of the big dangers about going to these sorts of events is that you can talk to perhaps one or two or a handful of people and you can get their opinions on on their systems and they're going to all be different differing depending on what they're offering. Um, but you're still going to have some similarities, but um, where with us, you can actually sit down and, and go through that discovery session and really understand your business and how you can align your learning needs to that uh, and kind of get the, those key differentiators and then go and look at those suppliers and kind of match that up properly. I think um, that's been one of the not necessarily surprising things that we've seen with our clients, but one of the interesting things that we've seen when we've worked with our clients on selecting learning tech is that um, they have actually taken a step back and gone, oh, wait, hadn't thought of it like that. Um, so that's been really interesting and quite um, encouraging um, that people are actually um, taking the time to do that rather than kind of rushing in it and buying um, tech for the sake of it. Yeah, I think one of the challenges with, with making any sort of tech purchase and I think probably that the analogy I'll use is like kitchen gadgets that when you look at something you think oh that's an amazing idea I'd love that I'd love to get up every day and have a smoothie or blend this or whatever the, the things are and yeah some people do that some people are going to be smoothie every morning they have that discipline that's part of their lives and you know they they love their blender or their smoothie maker or whatever it happens to be there are other people who are a little bit faddy and they'll maybe make smoothies for a week and then that'll drop off and they're then left with something that takes up some of their kitchen surface or maybe goes in a cupboard after a while and we know that there's lots of people who will have lots of things they've purchased and haven't really thought about because they bought those on impulse you know, and, and some people's kitchen cupboards are full of gadgets that they've maybe used once, twice, half a dozen times, or even not at all, or maybe once a year. So if you think about those things and think about that with learning tech, we often get into that same space of going in and seeing th something and thinking, God, that looks amazing. Wouldn't it be great if I could do that? Ask yourself the so what question. And that's what we do with clients. So, so what? You can do that. What are you really going to do with that? Is that going to make a difference? Are you consistently going to be able to to take that forward? Is it going to have an impact on your business? Because one of the things we bring is a reality of having been in in-house teams, having led learning functions and knowing that sometimes the things that sound great on a stage, you know, and some of the expert opinions out there haven't actually practiced and sometimes in practice those things don't come to reality so it's really understanding your business where you're at your evolution on the journey or people will call them maturity curves or whatever it happens to be but where is your business and what's most critical for them and what do you need along the way on that journey and then you start cutting through past the need to actually I don't need to buy a blender I don't need to buy a toasted sandwich maker what I really need to do is fundamentally change my oven because that's going to make the biggest difference to what I'm doing and it's the same with learning tech it's really getting down to what are the fundamental things you need to do to get past some of those gimmicks and gizmos and think about what's going to make a difference to your team your people and your organization and I started that way round, but in effect, it's the other way around. What does your organisation need? What do your people need? And then how does your team support that? And what do they need to do that? Rather than starting with, actually, wouldn't it be great if our team had this? So I think there's lots of things to consider on that journey. Yeah, and I think if uh, we hadn't if implemented that process with our clients, um, I don't think they'd necessarily get to the 
point that they have got to. Do you, do you think what what is your opinions on that? I think some clients would make a, a good stab of it and they do. You know, you can go out there and find some good systems on the market, but I can guarantee they wouldn't get the combination of value for money, right system, uh, aligning it to strategy, understanding the skills that their team might need around that to make the best of it, understanding about how they engage their wider stakeholders. So there's a whole set of things around that beyond the system that that we bring to our clients. But I think in the system itself, yeah, we've we've seen clients who were considering spending significant amounts of money that when we drilled down and looked at what they actually need, yeah, the systems they were buying were great or they're considering buying was great, but in effect, they were over buying massively. So, you know, again, the equivalent of what do you need your car for? I need it to go to the shops once a week and maybe two till down the road on a Sunday to the pub. Well, you know, they're buying something that, you know, is a heavy off road duty, you know, vehicle that can do all sorts of things that they'll never, ever, ever use. And that's what people are doing with learning systems is, you know, either buying too big and too wide and buying a load of features they didn't need and something that was far too complex, or again, just buying what they knew or what someone else knew. And it's amazing, no matter what process we go through, the word of mouth thing is always, is really strong for people. People take personal recommendations, but in learning tech, not many people have used more than one system. And if they have used more than one system, they probably haven't used them concurrently over a same period of time. So when you're asking someone what's, you know, what's the best learning system or does your learning system work for you? You're probably getting a very narrow view of the world, not very rounded. And that's, I think, one of the reasons why sometimes client testimonials will only give you so much because they'll only give you actually, yes, this does a good job for me unless you understand exactly the environment they're applying that in and is that really the same as yours because we might assume that a well-known drinks manufacturer is exactly the same as another well-known drinks manufacturer well actually you know they have different corporate structures different staffing levels different pay and rewards all sorts of difference that create a load of nuance within their requirements that mean they probably don't need the same systems and probably won't get the same benefit from the same systems. They are probably have very differing requirements. So I think understanding that nuance and being able to to look at a system and and really understand where you should take that and what what it does for your business is critical. Yeah, I think that's where um, comparison sites and kind of recommendation sites and things like that um, in regards to learning tech can be quite risky. Um, and we, we've kind of spoken about this before as well in the past, but like you said, James, it's really difficult to compare um, two organisations, even if they're in the same industry, let alone then compare their learning needs as well and how that learning tech kind of fits in with that. It isn't going to be the same. You're going to have different requirements. You're going to have different business objectives, etc. And you need to marry your learning um, solutions up with that as opposed to just copying other people. So that's where I think it can get quite risky. And I, I think by helping us as well, to add to kind of your points that you made about us working with clients, I think one of the things that we actually bring to it is actually working at pace as well, because we're completely involved in that market and we're constantly looking at different learning tech um, and seeing what's out there. We're able to make those comparisons um, based on people's business objectives um, a lot easier and a lot more quickly and we're able to do that at pace and actually provide our customers with really good um, options out there um, as opposed to people just kind of Google searching things and hoping to find the best five or whatever. So I think that's something else that we we actually bring to that. Yeah, and I think it's unrealistic to expect anyone who's in house to have that sort of view because why would you? Why would you spend that time getting to know products beyond the one you're working with? You know, you might have people who've got a very deep expertise within one product, within one business. That's great. That gives you a really solid view of that system. But then if you look and go and ask that person, you know, can you recommend a system? They'll probably say, yeah, yeah, this system's great because I understand it. I've put stuff into it. It works for my business. 
But what they haven't done is gone, actually, I've looked at 10 different systems recently and looked and I really understood, could they have done a better job for me? Most people haven't done that. They've just worked with their system. You know, they're probably just at an implementation journey. So it's it's being able to step back and say more broadly, can you understand what all the options are out there? So if you're running 100 meters and someone gives you a pair of trainers, great, you can run it really fast. But if you didn't know a pair of spikes existed, maybe you could have run it faster. And that's the that's the dilemma you have from sort of going to your network because you're going to get that view from your network, which is going to be single system view, not a holistic collective view of what is out there. Yeah, definitely. So do you think the people that weren't able to attend learning tech or aren't able to attend kind of any events in the future or near future, what do you think our tips for them would be? I think tips for them are just you know follow the high level steps in our process so you know don't be driven by the date of learning tech because in reality um this was in a world where you know this was the only way we could connect with people the only way we could find out about things and go in and see things and it you know it was an easy one-stop shop but when you look at it you you don't get that sort of in-depth guide that you need to so i would very much start with your business start with your needs start with what's important to you then start to think about when and where you need to make that change you can then go out and start to look at possibilities so you can you know we've talked about the pros and and cons of things like you know speaking to your friends speaking to your networks you know looking at comparison sites looking at fosway grids and any of those other things out there they all come with lots of pros and cons or you can you know speak to someone like us um and you know narrow down your options but when you then approach suppliers you you should be speaking to a few and having some really in-depth conversations and you should be talking about the things that are important to you so don't get blown away and carried along on their sales spiel. Talk about the things that are really important for you. And one of the things we try and do with clients is, is get worked examples. So how will this deliver? Show me, you know, pull together a problem, business problem you've got and think about how that can best be delivered. And then think about, will that actually work for your people in your business? Is that really going to be something that works because a lot of solutions yes you can do it but then you turn around and ask the question of people and say would you do that and they say oh no i wouldn't do that but i'm sure our people will well are your people really going to do some of that stuff or really going to buy into some of those solutions so i think it's about again understanding each of those steps business needs what's driving it what are the options out there really testing the options getting your team involved and I mean you know team right across the business so you'll have lots of stakeholders in any learning tech uh, decision from HR, IT, procurement, operations team, sales team, the people who are going to be using your systems, the line managers who are going to be supporting people to use your systems etc cetera, etc cetera. so try and get as much engagement as you can and you know beneficial engagement what do you need those people to be engaging with you on that project for. So are they to give feedback, ideas, or just to say, well, my friend and another company use this system and they really like it. So again, it's it's understanding that journey along the way as to what they can bring and what you're then ultimately going to get there. And then think about when you make that decision, not just launching or not putting all your energy into a launch, but how's this going to become embedded and become part of something bigger? Because the learning tech you're putting in is just an enabler for something else. So how are you going to ensure that that something else is actually delivered within your business? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And that's where people tend to get stuck. Like the engagement piece to to get it out into your business is really important. Like you said, getting as many people involved to begin with, because that helps um, continue and maintain that engagement after you've launched something. But we see with so many suppliers, 
that they launch with all these great companies um, and that's the only story that we hear them from that that supplier we don't hear anything else but it's the continued engagement that's the reason that you've actually bought that product um, and that's a bit that's where kind of where the, the hard work starts I think uh, for a learning team is to to continue that because you don't just want um, numbers of people into your system you want to actually be helping with those business problems that you had initially which was the reason why you're buying it in the first place and I think when you're a customer of a learning tech product if you've bought into a company that's got the right ethos as a supplier or a partner is be demanding of them because again we see lots of things go on roadmaps so one of the dangers is you can buy a future feature that is hopefully going to be delivered Q2 of this year, next year, whenever it happens to be. But, you know, be demanding, um, interrogate, you know, systems, have someone in your team who is almost that supplier's best friend or worst nightmare. Because I think if you're a customer that's interested, that's driving things forward, that if things aren't working, you feed back, you're making suggestions, you start to raise yourself up that suppliers or, or, the, or the partners agenda but also you're helping to shape that need going forward because ultimately what we always start with with our clients is once you've worked out what your business is doing can you do it with the stuff you've got and is the is moving to something else going to create a step change mm -hmm. for you because that change management and that process of moving to something new without a real discernible benefit can be really troublesome. So having that methodology and mindset in your business of how can we make this work, not this isn't doing what we want it to, can actually help you create far better solutions. I know Katie, you and I both in, in previous lives when we we're in in-house teams were the sort of people who would have learning systems solving problems they weren't meant to solve because actually if you're quite lateral of lateral thinking in your approach to things you can find solutions to problems that other people are probably just butting up against and not doing anything with so i think that creativity innovation continuing improvement of your systems continually questioning your your ideas and your assumptions and 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 not just letting it go stale things need to change and evolve all the time to make sure that they are continually to engage your people but also continuing to add value and solve the business needs that you've got and as we know in the current climate those business needs will be changing all the time as well yeah and i think it's about having a solution that kind of keeps up with the pace of that as well um and having something there and having a team that that also keeps up with the pace of that as well if you've got um a system um which you rely on perhaps a supplier or a third party to kind of upload content or anything like that and there are systems still out there that do require that that's really restrictive especially when everything's changing so quickly um but equally if your team and you you kind of mentioned that previously james if your team aren't able to to help with that content creation or or getting stuff uploaded changing stuff etc that can be um quite detrimental to kind of keeping up the pace um of the business and keeping those engagement levels high as well yeah absolutely and i think you know taking your team with you your firstly your learning team but then you know your wider hr or people team and your change team and your IT team and everyone else on that journey helps you create better solutions for ultimately your your end learners in the business who you know you should be listening to and should be engaging with and should be working with as well. Yeah, so I think there's probably a lot of great stories, especially from the past couple of years, like during the COVID kind of period, um, from people implementing new systems or about to implement new systems or new ways of working in regards to learning. So if there are anyone out there that would like to share their stories, please do get in touch with us um, and we'd love to hear them and, and talk about them as well. Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, we learn from the projects we do, from the customers we work with, from the suppliers we work with, but also you know from everyone else's successes their mistakes their failures the lessons they've learned along the way so it'd be great if we can hear some some stories from all of you as well awesome so thank you very much for joining us today if anyone wants to connect with us and find out more about us or about selecting new systems you can find our details in the show notes below
Thank you for listening to this episode of the Learning Reinvented podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. If you've not already done so, please follow our podcast. And if the learning effect can help you and your organisation, please do get in touch. You can find both James and Katie on LinkedIn and our contact details are in the show notes below.